Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York in the UK. I wanted to do this video um, for lots of reasons. The first thing is that I wanted to let everyone know that I'm not the same Dr. Sanjay Gupta who works for CNN. Uh, he's been in the media a lot recently um, and uh, some of his comments have uh, generated, you know, uh, uh, have, have made people upset. So a lot of people have written to me and said, how could you say this? I'm not the same guy. I work in the UK. I'm a cardiologist. However, I thought this would be a really good time to use what has been discussed in the media uh, to for me to try and educate people about their own health. So basically what it is, is that the, 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 <clears throat> there's been a lot of controversy and there's been a lot of publicity about this idea of heart disease and um, heart artery disease. So um, in America, uh, what uh, tends to commonly happen is that people have this thing called a CT coronary angiogram, and they measure the amount of calcium seen in the heart arteries. And from there, they can uh, calculate a, a kind of risk for the future of something bad happening. I wanted to try and break all this down, partly because I want people to understand what all this means, but also because uh, I wanted to try and educate people on how you go about helping yourself and preventing things from getting worse, all right? So the easy way to do this is to think of your arteries, the heart arteries, the arteries that supply the heart muscle with blood, uh, almost like um, pipes in your car that take fuel to the engine, all right? Now, if you take all the cars in the world, okay, or if you take all the people in the world and you take their heart arteries out and cut them open and look at them, you will get three main patterns, all right? So if you take all the cars in the world, take out their pipe, the pipe that takes the fuel to the engine from the fuel tank and cut it open, you will see three different patterns. The first pattern you will see is that the pipe is completely squeaky clean, nothing, as good as new. You can see everything, there is nothing, there's nothing stuck to the sides of the pipe, okay? And those are completely normal coronary arteries, all right? Uh, then you will see a pattern where there will be uh, pipes which will have a little bit of crud stuck to the sides, okay? Not a huge amount, not so much so that there's causing, there's a blockage in the pipe or anything like that, but it's just wear and tear and there's bits of fuel and uh, muck stuck on the sides. And um, so if you take um, a lot of people's heart arteries and look at them, you will see crud, you know, and that crud consists of things like calcium, cholesterol, etc. Uh, and that crud is just sitting in the walls. It's not actually causing a major problem, but it's just sitting in the walls. And then the, the third group is where you see the crud, but the crud is so bad that it is actually causing either an obstruction or causing a severe tight narrowing in the vessel. So those are the three patterns you will see, all right? You will see normal, you will see a bit of crud in the walls, but not a huge amount. And then you will see loads and loads to the point that there is a narrowing. Now, <clears throat> um, the first thing to say is that the majority of us, particularly as we reach our middle ages and our old age, will have some crud, okay? There's no doubt about it. Very few of us have no crud at all. When we're very small, when we're young, we don't. But as we get older, the majority of us develop something. Uh, and then there is a few of us who will have very tight narrowings because of this crud. But in those people, they generally experience some symptoms. They will say, when I walk, I get a heaviness or tightness in my chest because when they walk, their heart is asking for more blood, their engine is asking for more fuel, and the fuel can't get through this narrowing quick enough, and that causes discomfort. And so, so, but the point is this, if you have completely normal arteries, great, this is as good as it gets. If you have the crud which is stopping blood from getting through, you usually get a warning, you get discomfort in the chest, and you usually go and see a cardiologist, and they talk about putting stents in or bypasses. The problem is the group in the middle, the group who have a little bit of crud, which is not causing any symptoms, but the arteries are, complete, are not completely normal. And in those people, if you find that they have it, uh, then the question is, what do you do about it? The que because the problem with this is, 
it could get worse. A bit of the crud could break off and cause the, the pipe to block off all of a sudden. So what do you do about it at this stage when you're not getting any symptoms, when you feel okay in yourself, but someone tells you that there is a bit of crud? And the uh, answer is this. The first thing you have to ask yourself is why did it get there? It got there because of four reasons. One, age. Okay. Two, genetics. Three, luck. And four, lifestyle. In terms of uh, age, you can't do anything about that. Genetics, you can't do anything about that. Luck, you can't do anything about. Lifestyle, you can do something about. So if you improve your lifestyle, there is a great, great likelihood of the crud not getting worse. All right. So if you have a bad lifestyle, and in terms of lifestyle, I mean diet, uh, making sure that you're eating uh, less sugar, non-processed food, uh, you know, healthy organic food, uh, keeping yourself really well hydrated, avoiding kind of toxins like cigarettes, etc. Exercise, so moderate exercise is exceptionally good for this. Um, it will stop things from getting worse, but it will also stabilize the blockage, uh, not the blockages, but the crud, okay? So it stops crud from falling off. Sleep is hugely important. I always go on about sleep, but trying to get seven or eight hours of sleep a day of restful sleep is very good. And if you think you're getting good sleep, the one question you should always ask is, do I feel refreshed first thing in the morning when I wake up? And if you don't, then there may be a problem with your sleep, all right? So it's worth looking at that. And finally, stress and minimizing stress. And this is very difficult because um, stress is ubiquitous. Um, you know, uh, but mindfulness, uh, you know, um, relaxation, yoga is all very good. Then we come to the point of, well, what else can we do? All right. Now, when I'm faced with this, there are three, there are two things that usually come up. Uh, and I just wanted to talk to you about this. People say, take aspirin. Okay. Aspirin is traditionally given. However, if you look to see what the actual benefit of aspirin in this setting is, it's very small. So there is a website called www.thennt.com. If you ever get a chance to uh, visit the site, it is worth doing because it will tell you when they look at all the data, they say that actually if you treat 1,667 patients with aspirin for one year, you will prevent a heart attack in a heart attack or a stroke in one patient. And these are non-fatal things. So you don't actually prevent death by taking aspirin, uh, uh, but you may prevent uh, a non-fatal heart attack or a stroke in one person, but you would have to treat 1,667 patients. It is obviously worth also knowing that aspirin is not harmless and does have side effects. And if you treat enough people um, with aspirin, in fact, one in 3,333 patients that you treat with aspirin will have a major bleed as a result of being on aspirin. So aspirin, I don't think, is very useful in this setting. Okay, People recommend it, but when you actually look at the evidence, the benefit of aspirin is very, very small. Then there is the issue of statins, okay? And now statins are commonly given. When you look at the data, if you treat one in 60, if you treat 60 people, okay, with this kind of condition for five years, five years, then you will prevent one non-fatal heart attack, okay? And if you treat 268 people for five years, you will prevent one stroke but you don't actually save any lives. Um, and so again, statins are beneficial, but actually you have to treat a lot of patients, okay? And the problem with statins is that they also carry side effects. They also carry muscle aches, they can cause blood sugars to be elevated, etc. Then there is something that not many people talk about, which is actually really effective, and that is a Mediterranean diet. So there was they, they, the, if you go on the nnt.com, if you look at a Mediterranean diet, and I will put out what a Mediterranean diet means shortly, um, but when you treat someone for five years on a Mediterranean diet, you have to treat 61 people for five years on a Mediterranean diet. You have to put 61 people on a Mediterranean diet, you will prevent a stroke, heart attack, or death in one patient. So if you, um, if enough people, if enough people ate a Mediterranean diet, 
You just need to treat 61 people for five years on a Mediterranean diet and you will prevent one heart attack, stroke or death. The great news is there are no side effects from a Mediterranean diet. So I hope this is helpful because what it tells us is that actually, whilst there's a lot of publicity on taking aspirin and statins, a Mediterranean diet and leading a good lifestyle is incredibly effective and probably even more effective than this. Now, I can't I would never recommend that you make decisions on your medications without consulting a doctor who knows you, but I thought I would just give you this bit of advice. So if you are someone who has heart disease which hasn't misbehaved, okay, the crucial point about this is if you have heart disease which hasn't misbehaved, which hasn't caused any blockages, etc., you just have a little bit of crud in your blood vessel, a Mediterranean diet is probably one of the most um, uh, beneficial ways and side effect free ways to minimize your risks of a problem developing in the future. So again, thank you so much. And thank you for the great comments. I loved yesterday's um, discussion on my Facebook page. I just wanted to let you know that I am going to be putting more videos out. Um, I do put some videos out on my Facebook page, which are not accessible on YouTube. And there will be videos on YouTube, which won't be accessible on my Facebook page, uh, but they're all free. And therefore, I'd encourage you to come and join me on my Facebook page. And the way you find me on Facebook is by typing in yourcardiology at gmail.com. Thank you so much. All the best. And please, please, I'm not the same Sanjay Gupta who's on CNN. Okay, thank you.